Greetings and blessings, you guys, and welcome to our healing service. Hallelujah. God is moving. Like, my goodness, he has been on the move Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, he has absolutely just been speaking and ministering to us, and I am so excited about what he's going to do tonight. I am Apostle Marquita Brooks. I'm the National Coordinator of the Invitation Movement, and I lead the ministry that oversees the Invitation Movement, which is the Truth in the Spirit. We have accepted God's invitation to meet him where he is working to turn this nation back to himself one city at a time through healing, peace, and justice. And these online healing services are all about healing each one of our souls as we heal the soul of this nation. Our God is at work. He is on the throne. He is moving throughout the United States and all over the world in preparation for Messiah's return. He's bringing his people into alignment with his kingdom, and he's empowering us to advance his kingdom. God wants to use you, me, all of us, and I want to hear what he has to say. And so I'm looking forward to him ministering tonight. Lawrence and Jasmine Nichols are going to lead us in worship. Then Jasmine Nichols is going to share a report out on the topic, Unity and Apostolic Partnership. Then Tanisha Press is going to share an exhortation on the topic, preparing, yeah, preparing for the breakthrough. I'm excited. God is going to move, and I pray that you get yourself into position that you can receive all that he has for you on this evening. Let us pray. Father, we lift you up, and we worship you, Lord God, and we dedicate this healing service to you, Lord. We exalt you on the throne, and we say, have your way. We welcome you to move by the power of your spirit. Hallelujah. You are high and lifted up, Lord God. We ask that you draw us into your presence, Lord. Deliver us from those things that need to be removed. Heal our souls, Lord God, that we might be your people as you are our God. We'd be positioned to be used by you. Hallelujah. Speak to us and deposit into us. Hallelujah. That we would demonstrate your character and, and do what you would have us do in the earth, being your hands and feet, ministering to the hearts of those around us, meeting needs. Hallelujah. Addressing challenges sharing solutions and working in cooperation to fulfill those strategies. Father, we thank you even now for all that you're doing, Lord, and we commit this healing service unto you. Have your way. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And so I'm going to turn it over to Lawrence and Jasmine Nichols now as they lead us in worship. Yeah. 
upon my heart as a seal upon my arm. For there is love that is as strong as death, jealousy demanding as the grave, and many
tell you guys, Mika Mocha is actually one of my, my favorite worship songs. There was a season um, really when the Lord was, was bringing me 
into the Hebrew, to the faith, and I was in prayer. I was praying in English, and I was praying in, in tongues. And then all of a sudden, out of my soul came that phrase, me come up, me come up, me come up. And I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> and I was just saying, me come up, me come up, just, just loving on the Lord, me come up, me come up. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what I'm saying to you right now, but me come up. And I went to uh, Shabbat service, as I am saying, that Friday. And me come up, appeared on the screen. And I said, oh, wow, my soul was saying, who is like thee, O oh Lord? Oh, what a beautiful revelation. The reality is Hebrew is the original language. And when the Lord sang us into existence, he sang us into existence in Hebrew, in which case Hebrew is in our DNA. It's, it's in our very makeup, uh, the, the ancient language that the Lord has had to recapture, reclaim, and reintroduce to humanity many times. Many times he's had to, to give it back to us again and again and again as a gift because the language has been lost many, many times. Uh, but the Lord keeps rebirthing it in us as a people because he's reviving something in our souls. He's reviving something in our bodies and our makeup and our design. And whenever I, I sing me I'm, I'm at the foot of Mount Sinai. The Lord is, is, is atop the mountain in, in glory of fire and lightning and dark cloud. And he's revealing himself and receiving the law and and just, just coming into covenant with him, Exodus 19, Exodus 20. Um, and, and, and that's it. When, whenever we see Mikomoka, that's it. I'm right there. I'm, I'm at Mount Sinai and renewing this covenant with the Lord and just learning how beautiful he is all over again, just coming out of bondage, just coming out of slavery and, and learning that he is the one true God and everything else has to bow down before him. You guys may not understand why we do these healing services four nights a week. But the Lord said very clearly that what he was doing was fueling this movement. These healing services are fuel for the movement. The Lord is doing something in his people in this nation. And he needs us to receive what he has for us during these healing services. So that throughout the week, we can actually be positioned to do what he would have us to do, to meet him where he's working, to turn this nation back to himself one city at a time. There's work that each of us is required to do in our cities, right where we are, but you need fuel. You need more of his spirit. You need deliverance. You need healing. You need training. You need fuel to actually do the work of the Lord, to meet him where he's working in your city. And this is what these healing services are all about. It's also a time for us to hear from each other all over the nation, report out some testimonies that we would know what's happening all over. So I want to encourage you to contact us, connect with us. Um, there's places on our website, invitation to where you can say, you know, I'd like to be involved. You can also email me at info at invitationmbmt.org. Um, but either way, connect with us. You can put it in the in the discussion under the video. <laughs> we get all of that. But let us know that you'd like to share a report out. You'd like to share a testimony because we do want to know what's happening where you are. We want to pray with you. And so with all of that being said, we're going to have a report out by Jasmine Nichols. She's actually going to talk to us tonight about unity and apostolic partnership. Now, you know, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Y'all know I am. I can't wait to hear what the Lord will say through her. Um, the Lord has been just speaking through his people, and it has been a tremendous, tremendous blessing. So get your pens and papers out so that you can take notes on what the Lord is revealing through both Jasmine and, of course, after her, Tanisha Press as well. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jasmine, so we can hear what the Lord has been revealing. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Apostle Marquita. Um, it's always such a blessing and an honor to be able to share with uh, share with you all and just um, even just to be a part of the invitation movement and what the God, what the Lord is doing um, through it, because I, I just think these are such divine times. And I definitely believe that this is a movement of God and it is completely in alignment with what he's doing in various places all over the earth. So I'm just really thankful for your obedience in that. Um, so with talking about unity and apostolic partnership, so today I was just reading through the scriptures and I read through Romans 16 and in the TLV version, again, just um, coming into some of the Hebrew uh, versions of the word of God. So TLV is the tree of life version. And then there's also the complete Jewish version. Um, I get such 
a greater revelation of uh, the intent in God's heart and the intent in God's word and just the culture that he wanted to create amongst believers um, when I read these versions. So I was reading out of the TLV version and that uh, subtitle right there in Romans 16 was welcome the apostolic team. Welcome the apostolic team. And I was like, wow, I don't think I've ever seen that in other versions. And if I, I'm, I know that these scriptures are in other versions, but I don't ever think that it was so blatant and, and um, apparent that he was uh, literally sending out an apostolic team and giving instruction on how to receive that particular team. And I was like, wow, this is, this is great. <clears throat> and so uh, Paul is writing here, and he's just going line by line. He's saying, you know, greet this person, greet this person. And when he's telling them to greet them, he's sort of given like this letter of recommendation of what they've done and why they can be trusted and how they've been of service to him and how they've been of service to other believers. Um, then as we get down to verse 16. And it says, greet one another with a holy kiss. All of Messiah's communities greet you. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eye on those who are causing divisions and stumbling blocks contrary to the teaching that you learned. And that, that's in verse 17. And as I'm reading through this, uh, the Lord began to minister to me. Um, and, and before I get into that, I'll say this. Something that I'm absolutely observing and can testify to that the, that the Lord is doing in this season, in this time, and definitely in this region, is he is building apostolic partnerships. He is building apostolic covenant, covenants. Um, he, he's bringing ministries and individuals. There, there are such an intertwining of ministries, such an intertwining of vision and kingdom advancement. And I've just... Um, it's everywhere I go in every ministry that I'm a part of with any believer that I'm talking to. They're like, you know, we were just partnered with this person and they gave us access to these resources and in turn, we're giving them this and in turn, we're giving them that. And I mean, literally everywhere I go, I'm seeing these um, alignments that the Lord is just intertwining everything and bringing everything together. And it's so beautiful. And I remember at the beginning of last year was the first time I heard Apostle Marquita say that uh, unity is a miracle. Unity is a miracle. And I always think about that because it's something that that God, only God can do. Only the Lord can do. And we can only truly be a part of it when we are really in alignment with him. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, as I'm reading verse 16, greet one another with the holy kiss. So it's not a one-sided thing. We have to mutually um, desire this unity. We have to mutually, you know, desire this covenant and something that is pure. But immediately after that, it says to keep your eye on those who are causing divisions. And so the Lord was telling me, anytime there's an opportunity for unity, there's going to be opportunity for division. And the Lord told me very clearly, um, one of the first ways to combat division is to realize that we are, we, we are capable of being the ones that cause it. And the Lord was, he was, he was telling me in, in, in you know, even, and this is, this is to me, Jasmine, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about nobody else or anything else. He's like, Jasmine, you have to realize at any given moment, you could be a conduit for unity or division. Yesterday, you may have did unity really well, but today, if you don't seek me, you could do division really well. <laughs> and with that, how he told them to keep, keep their eyes on those who cause division and that I, I felt a prompting of the Holy Spirit to ask the Lord, Lord, keep your eye on me. You keep your eye on me and reveal to me what you see. Reveal to me any way of division in me, but also reveal to me the, the ways of unity in me, because we all have things in us that we have to bring to the Lord, things from past relationships or past ministries or past work experiences and all of these things in us that where we're going could cause division. But at the same time, those past experiences, past ministries, past work experience have birthed in us and cultivated in us tools for unity. 
And so it's all there. And so we we have to seek the Lord to reveal everything, all of it. And and that was something strategic. He, and, the, and the Lord is laying out strategies, strategies, kingdom strategies to help teams come together, to help with this apostolic unity, to help with this apostolic uh, partnership and apostolic covenant. And it is so beautiful. And the Lord just simply said, part of that strategy is asking for him to reveal what is in me. And again, not just the division, because also there are ways in us um, where our teams need to know, okay, Jasmine can do the, to do this, Lawrence can do this, and we need you to be the bridge builder there and to unify there. And, and when we seek God and ask, we're asking him to keep his eye on us. Um, and again, I know I said it before, but to just really stress how the Holy Spirit was stressing it to me, we become... We give way to our blind spots when we think we don't have them. When we think we don't have a blind spot, when we think I can't possibly be a stumbling block, I can't possibly be somebody that is causing division, the enemy may have already gotten a foothold, mm -hmm. if we even think that. And so the Lord is just saying, you know, constantly examine yourself, examine yourself. Are you greeting your brothers and sisters with a holy kiss? Are you are you greeting them? Um, again, I almost think about when you write a contract and people shake hands over it. Or at a, at a marriage ceremony, you may now kiss your bride. It is something to seal this agreement. You know, and when we come to seal these partnerships, when we come to seal these covenants, is that kiss, is that handshake, is it truly holy? And are we willing to examine it every day? Because what may have been holy one day may need to be washed off and cleaned up and re-examined the next day, moment by moment. Um, so that is what I had today, um, just for us to be on guard. Last thing I'm going to say is just as the Lord said, keep your eye on those who are causing division. The, the one I'm keeping my eye on is the enemy. I'm keeping my eye on the enemy. That is the, he is the ultimate um, divider, the ultimate divider, the ultimate accuser. And I have to keep an eye on any enemy that may even want to rise up in me. Anything that is not of God that may even rise up in me, um, but also moving forward in the strategies of unity that God has given me, sharing those with, the, with my brothers and sisters, not being stingy um, with my gifts and also being willing to see what others have to offer as God is doing the work to create these beautiful strategic apostolic teams that are absolutely ushering in his kingdom and his glory. So that is all I have for you guys today. Amen. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for sharing that. What an important revelation. Like she, she, had, she made me have to go back and break out my TLD. I was like, I've never seen that heading. <laughs> I had to go get it. So I was like, oh my God, there it is right there. <laughs> and, and that is so beautiful because we are really trying to go back to the way um, ministry was set up, the ecclesia, the body was established in the first century. It's so important because we've gotten so far away from it that what we are doing pretty much right now, the, the, the original 12 would not even recognize it. They would be like, "What is this? This is <laughs> what are y'all doing? What, we don't even know what this is." Like, it's, <laughs> it is important that we understand that because the Lord is bringing us back. And so, what feels uncomfortable and what feels foreign is really Him taking us back to the ancient path. He's taking us back to His way and pulling us away from the type of things that we created because all of that's passing away, all of that's come crumbling down. He's taking us back to His original model, which is so so important. Because we, we've got to be prepared for it. We've got to be shifted for it. We've got to be excited about it. And so I bless God for that revelation. It's exciting to me, um, especially coming from Jasmine, um, because their parents actually lead an apostolic ministry that is a partnership with Houston Spirit, an apostolic ministry, um, which is how we are also connected. It's a beautiful connection. Uh, they're a part of our Ecclesia Network of Ministries, and they have loaned us two of their worship teams, <laughs> which includes Jasmine and Lawrence, and then also the Davids. They're actually a part of her parents' worship or ministry, and now they minister with us, and then all the trainings and stuff we do, we share with them. And, I mean, the Lord is just so beautiful, and we, we glean from each other, we learn from each other, and we are so blessed by each other. 
Like, and that's the only way the body can function. I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord does not give any individual everything that, that he or she needs because he wants us to be interdependent and connect with each other. But he also doesn't give any individual ministry or congregation everything that it needs. He won't do it. He will give you um, what you need to fulfill, to be who you are for your identity, but not everything you need to do everything he's called you to do because he's requiring that you connect with other believers. Like he makes it a requirement. <laughs> it is a part of him, him teaching us to play nice with each other, you know, to really be family, to be brethren. Um, and that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've seen certainly um, their parents' ministry just do so many cooperative things. I've met other ministries through them. And I mean, it's just, it, it's beautiful to see God actually do this work and, and to do it with good hearts and with love. But you know what I mean? With right intentions. Nobody's trying to usurp anybody. Nobody's trying to do anything underhanded, but really just supporting and loving each other is tremendously uh, a blessing. It's a tremendous blessing. In fact, um, Lawrence's dad is going to be speaking at Ecclesia. He's one of our speakers at Ecclesia 2021. Um, and I'm so excited. He was up here. Y'all remember when he was up here and we didn't want him to leave? Like, I think we had an after meeting that was about 45 minutes after that healing service because he was just pouring out so much revelation. But that's what happens when we come together in the body. And this is what's supposed to be happening, not just in our local regions, but all over the world. We're supposed to be connecting across all types of lines. That's why God has given us this technology that we can just connect, we can make these beautiful connections. We can just allow him to, to, to supplement the things that we need as individuals, but also as ministries and even as regions. There is nothing lacking in the kingdom, nothing. And if you feel there's a lack, ask God, because he'll direct you in the right direction. And so thank you so much for reminding us of that, because especially in this season, the enemy wants us to focus on everything we think we don't have. He wants us to focus on everything we think we need, everything we think we lack, everything that, that we feel we're deficient in. And the Lord is like, I'm pointing you to resources. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting you with family. Open your eyes and see what I'm doing. And that, that just blessed me. It blessed me so much. And I think it's a wonderful segue into preparing, preparing for the breakthrough <laughs> that Tanisha is about to share with us, this exhortation we're going to hear from Tanisha Press. Um, as God has been ministering to us about breakthrough and blessing all weekend. And so I'm very excited about her sharing this revelation with you guys and what he is going to do to really minister to us all. Tanisha, I'm going to turn it over to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, Apostle, for just giving this opportunity to, to come on to the invitation movement. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for ministering through song and through word and, and Lawrence as well. Um, every time I'll give my testimony about Mika Mocha, I heard it the first time um, at Congregation Zion say, and I could literally feel my soul lifting my spirit to the Lord. And it was just the most like mind blowing thing. Every time I, I feel it every time. So I just praise God for that song. <laughs> But um, also, I'm um, just talking about the breakthrough. So the Lord, he's really preparing us to receive the breakthrough. And you would have to be blind to look into the heavens right now and not see that it's about to rain. And his spirit is about to pour out on all flesh. And that latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. And I'm just so excited for that. And after temple service last Shabbat, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, this is such a dry and a thirsty land. We need your spirit. I just had a taste of that living water. I need more. And so this morning, he kind of shared with me about how to prepare for the breakthrough. So I'm going to share with you what he gave to me. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a backdrop here. So our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a covenant keeping God. So Torah is the covenant between God and his own people. Both parties are subject to certain legal obligations. God has initiated this covenant. He's sealed it with his own blood. He's legally bound himself to keep his word. But Israel is bound to do the same. And we Gentiles, according to Romans 11, are grafted into Israel. So we're bound to do the same as well. So he's a promise keeper. But we have to be consecrated to him. We have to dedicate our temple to him. Just as we sang in the worship so beautifully that the, there's a love that's as strong as death and there's many waters that can't quench his love. His covenant is his love. It's that marriage covenant that we have. And so we ask him to just be that flame inside of us until we are just one with him. 
So I'm taking this directly from the covenant that we read each temple service. It says that we have to be dedicated to the fulfillment of his word, cleanse regularly of all that would defile us, and set apart from the world and worldliness. So number one, we got to break any contrary covenants in our life. We got to rededicate our temple. Contrary covenants can be with spirits, uh, with our own flesh, people, places, things, beliefs, actions, anything that's not aligned with God and his word, it'll hinder the presence of God and the blessings in our life. So if we're aligned with any contrary covenants, then we don't have wholehearted devotion to the Lord. So contrary covenants grieve his Holy Spirit. The more we grieve his spirit, the more he will depart. And so this is one of my, my favorite scriptures. And I think it goes beautifully also with Jasmine with Romans 16 as well. This is um, Psalms 139, 23 through 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me, know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And so there's a good way, an ancient path his covenant that's set before us, but any contrary covenant that we make is going to lead us astray. Praise God, though, in John 15, he says that I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So apart from him, any contrary covenant, anything that's an offense to him is not going to lead us to the breakthrough. Point number two, repentance and healing. So Psalms 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. We need to be brokenhearted and mourn over our own sins and the sins of our nation. By his stripes, we are healed. We're healed in our body, but we're also healed in our spirit. We need to turn to the Lord, change our wicked ways, and be healed. Submitting ourselves to the Lord for his glory, being bound to him, and looking to him only because he is our father. Psalms 27, 10 states, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So when my eyes are upon the Lord, when my trust is in him, when he is my everything, then the Lord will take me up. So that, that Psalm is really a renewed vow of faithfulness to God and, and ultimately a statement of belief in his power and complete trust in the protection that only God can provide. And as we do this, as he takes us up, we become sons of God. Romans 8, 12 through 25. So then brethren, we are under obligation, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. So as sons, we're being led by the spirit. But as sons of God, we also have to expect that there's going to be discipline when we do wrong. The Lord is going to discipline us. Hebrews 12, 5 through 6. Six echoes Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. And it states, my son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. When we've been received by the Lord and he's called us sons of God, then we're going to need to look like the son of God, the exact image of God. James 1, 23 through 24 speaks of what, what, what happens when that happens. When we look upon Yeshua, when we look into the mirror of the perfect word, we adjust our appearance so we become more like the sun. Point number three, we have to have a lifestyle of worship, fasting, prayer, reading the word, and studying the word. So this is something the Lord's been dealing with me, I would say, about two years, <laughs> the fasting issue especially. <laughs> but these are all markers of a surrendered life to God. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That's Romans 12, 1. So where it's a personal sacrifice, we're picking up our cross to follow him. We're putting our focus on the Lord. So it's not about personal preferences or convenience or what's easy for us or 
fitting God into our schedule or into a nice little box, but it's about being intentional. And it's about worshiping him the way that's pleasing to him. It's about celebrating who he is and what he's done. It's about commanding our soul to give him praise. You know, rejoice on my soul and give him praise. Psalms 119, nine through 16 states, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up in my, in, in my heart that I might not sin against you. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And so as we, we do this, as we, we seek the Lord, as we, we meditate on his word, we become more like Yeshua. We take more of his character, right? And we keep him ever before us. And also Psalm 35, 13 says that I humbled myself with fasting. And so that's something the Lord has really been working with me about is that it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of laying yourself on the altar. It's a lifestyle of, of denying the flesh, uh, of, of putting the flesh down so that you can properly hear from the Lord and that your flesh is an out of control. So you're not being a stumbling block to someone else. Seeking the Lord, inquiring of him. Um, having his word in your heart between your eyes, filling yourself with his word, you know, reading his word, studying his word, and, and also listening. Something the Lord has, has changed um, in my life is I used to listen to, a, you know, gospel music that was more man focused, you know, where, where, you know, it's all about how you feel, but really listening to worship music that is God focused, scripturally based. I mean, that's so powerful. That's how you can meditate on the word as well and delighting in his ways, delighting in, in, in who he is and humbling ourselves before him with prayer and fasting. Point number four, um, he's gonna give you opportunities to apply the word to your life so that you have a personal testimony. Um, Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, that's you know, Satan, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. So one thing, um, an experience for me is that I, it's hard, as my knowledge of the Lord increases, my worship increases, because I can't worship him beyond my understanding. So, I, you know, the more experiences I have, the more revelation I have of him, I see my worship growing um, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting a greater understanding of who he is. And so he gives me those experiences so that I can understand who he is and actually experience his salvation and his deliverance for myself. So it's not just me reading something in a book, but this is actually, I saw this, this is, I've experienced this. So we can't, you know, uh, despise the, 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 his discipline. We can't despise the, the experience of the threshing process because these are, this is our testimony that we can give to others to, and, and that we can overcome. And so he gives us opportunities every day to stand on his word and to actually choose his character. So it's so important that, you know, we're standing at the road and we're looking and we're asking for the good way and we're choosing who he is. Um, that's just, that's so key. So Luke 9, 23 says, and he said to all of them, any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And so we really need to, again, deny ourselves in these situations, not give away, to, give away to the flesh, but really choose the Lord. So we don't choose the flesh, but choose his ways. And then that we see his salvation. We see the deliverance of the Lord. Um, the next point, point five, is opportunities to exalt him, to be the light. So Yeshua said in John 12, 32, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. So we have this huge responsibility of lifting him up. We've got to lift up the Lord in our word, in our deed, in our actions, in our character. We have to be the light. We have to give him thanks and we have to order our way rightly. That's Psalms 50, 23 says, the one who offers Thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To, to one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. And so as we're giving him thanks, as we're, we're glorifying the Lord, as we're ordering our steps, as the word tells us, as his spirit tells us, 
that's how we'll receive the salvation of the Lord. As we're also pointing back to the one, everything we do and say has to glorify the Lord. Um, and something that I've noticed, the, the more that I glorify the Lord, even the smallest things, like I was out, um, I was out jogging and this lady was like, oh, look at you go, you're doing so well. And I was like, to God the glory. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, he just pours out more of his countenance of his peace because he's like, you know what? That one right there is gonna give me the glory. So let me just go ahead and do that. And I mean, that that's a secret right there, y'all. I mean, that's a game changer for me. <laughs> I mean, he pours out more of his character, more of the life and life more abundant. And, and I believe, revival and restoration right around the corner here and because we won't hold it in for ourselves he's going to he's going to give us more because it's opportunities to serve to be the salt matthew 23 11 through 12 the greatest among you shall be the servant whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted and so i think also this goes back to what you were saying jasmine about working together with other ministries you know one thing I, I remember when I, I first um, became involved with Truth in the Spirit and, and with the invitation movement, you could just see in the spirit that you see Apostle Brooks, you see her um, building upon the Rosh Pinah, building upon Yeshua. And you're like, you know what? Like Nehemiah 2.18, let's arise and let's build. You know, that's how they said, like, let's do it. Let's work together. Um, you know, don't grow weary either in doing good because in proper time, we will reap the harvest of souls if we don't give up. And so that's what the breakthrough is really all about. You know, I know, you know, people might think it's about a, you know, a job or a house or this or that. But to me, it's really about seeing souls come into the kingdom. That's the breakthrough. When we see him just glorified, we see him high and lifted up. That to me is going to be when the world knows that there is a God in Israel, then that's the breakthrough for me. Um, and also James 2, 14 through 26, you know, we can't, um, we have to have great faith in this because, and we have to have our works, but this is what, because faith without works is dead. So we have to show the love of God in our faith at all times. Um, point number seven, the breakthrough is going to take you out of your comfort zone. So Psalms 96, one, three says, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord, um, all the earth, sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. And so that was something that happened to um, an experience for me was last week was the Lord wanted a new song from me. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, a new song, what does that mean? <laughs> I get a little nervous. <laughs> Cause I like the comfort zone, just like everybody kind of does, but it was, he wanted a new song. And so for me, that was, I'll be honest, it was congregational dance. He wanted me to, to do, to dance before him. And so, um, that's going to have you seeking the Lord more. Cause I'm not a dancer, you know, so I got a Lord dance through me, dance with me, Lord. Um, and it has me interacting with people that are, that are different than you are, or, or doing things that you totally just wouldn't do or is not, you know, your style. Um, and it's also supporting someone else's vision that the Lord gave them, you know, Lord didn't download that dance to me, but I see that he did to someone else and I'm gonna support her and her vision of what the Lord's given, given that person. So it's really about just stepping out in faith, in trust and, and helping your brother or your sister build upon the Lord. And just like Jasmine said earlier and Apostle Brooks has said, unity is a miracle. So when, you, when we're unified, the world will know that he is Lord. And so um, also something else the Lord has been doing when I say take me out of the comfort zone, it's literally being like weaning me um, from this. So when, it, when it's time for me to start to, to speak or something like that, it'll take me days and days and days to prepare something. So he'll, he'll start talking to me, you know, like, okay, you got something coming up Friday. We'll start talking Monday. But like with last week, I kept asking like, well, Lord, you know, I know we got something Friday, you know, um, with the global prayer, you know, what do you want us to say? What do you want to do? And he's like, oh, you know, just dance. Don't worry about it. You know, he's kind of like, and then so I'm like, okay, it's 12 o'clock, Lord, on Friday. <laughs> what you want to say? 
But he's really just saying, look, Tanisha, you have got to shaka, you've got to worship, you got to bow low and, and get lost in that worship. Just be, just let yourself go, be saturated in his presence and, and trust that at the appointed time that he's going to speak through you. You know, I'm, I'm very um, a type personality. I was a teacher for 11 years. I like to have a lesson plan, but he's really saying, you know what? You got to worship. You got to be slow to speak, quick to hear, but always ready with the word with gentleness and respect. And so in essence, it means just moving with the cloud and being sensitive to his spirit. You know, the father's voice is such a commanding voice and I'll have you prostrate before the Lord. But the Holy Spirit, you really have to steal yourself and be lost in him to really hear his voice clearly. And so when I run ahead, I mess up. And so that's something I can't do. And I can't get down on myself either, something that happens and low self-esteem will creep in. Um, but something he'll say is, have I not called you? Which points me to Isaiah 43, one says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And so of course he's talking to Israel, but I'm taking it as something personal and you can too. And he's talking to you. You don't have to fear, have a confidence in who you are in Messiah that you can do all things through him. He gives you strength, he gives you power. So you don't have to fear your imagination. You don't have to fear your own limitations. You don't have to feel your, your past failures. You don't have to fear man. And you don't have to fear the breakthrough itself. And I know that that sounds strange, but I remember um, reading in the word when I first got saved and, and the Lord said that um, the things that I do, you'll do even greater. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want all that. <laughs> But you don't have to fear the break. He's going to use you. He's going to be, you're going to be protected by him. You're going to be fine. And he's going to get the glory. And so you don't have to fear what the Lord has in store for you, but you can be excited about it because he's going to get the glory from it. And so we only fear God. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, it says, let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's our whole reason here is just to, to love him and to, to, to do what he tells us to do, to be his vessels in this earth. And so I just, I praise him for that. I, I pray that that was uh, something that encourages you to, to continue on. And I will definitely pray through that word as well. So Lord, we just praise you for being the God of breakthrough, Lord. We desire to see you high and lifted up. And we desire to see your train fill this temple, your train to fill this entire earth with your glory, Lord. Lord, we praise you for the covenant that you sealed with your own blood. And Lord, we break any contrary covenants with spirits or greed or lust or with pride or anything that would keep us, Lord, from your spirit, that keeps us estranged from you, Lord, that keeps us offending your spirit or offending others or being a stumbling block to others, Lord God. We rededicate our temple back unto you, Lord. And Lord, we come to you mourning over our sins and over the sins of this nation, Lord. And we're asking you, Father, to heal us by the blood of Messiah, the blood of Messiah that unifies us, Lord, the blood of Messiah that just, that destroys all division, Lord. Keep renewing us, Lord. Keep renewing us, Lord, by your word so that we might know what is good and acceptable in your sight. Let us be a living sacrifice unto you, Lord. Make us holy for you are holy, Lord. Make us one because you are one. Search us, Lord. Make us the light and the salt. Give us a new song that we might glorify you among men. We pray this all in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Tanisha, for sharing. Thanks again, Jasmine and Lawrence. You guys are a tremendous blessing. And of course, I'm going to release the ironic blessing over you guys. I'm going to sing it over you in Hebrew and then in English. But I'm going to tell y'all, it means something different to me since Saturday. I have always positioned myself to receive the ironic blessing. Whenever anyone said, you know, they're about to release the ironic blessing, I always positioned myself with my head down, my hands open to receive the blessing of the Lord. That's always been my posture. On Saturday, I'm um, doing that particular Shabbat temple service. I, I spoke the message, um, blessed by the best. 
And then Elder Denise began to pray. And after she prayed, the Lord began to speak through me very powerfully. And the, one of the last things he said was, get on your knees. I'm about to bless you. And it was very powerful the way he said it. And the blessing was the ironic blessing. And so all for the rest of that night, the next day, the ironic blessing is just ringing over and over in my soul. And I say that to you to say that it's not a light thing, the ironic blessing. It's not a simple thing that the Lord specifically spoke it to Moses and said, give this blessing to Aaron that he could pronounce my name over the people. You'll find it in Numbers chapter six. Like this was a, a specific act of God to release a blessing unto his people and to place his name, to mark his people with his name. So I want to encourage you whenever the ironic blessing is released, whether I'm singing it or Watson is singing it or you're somewhere else and someone else is releasing it or speaking it, whenever it comes forth, position yourself to really receive from the Father because these are his words over you, over your life, over your situation, over your mind, over your heart, hallelujah, over your will, over your finances. This is his blessing being pronounced over you and you want to hear the Father speaking into you where you have need where you are deficient you want to receive from him so with that being said position yourself for the ironic blessing Ya e ya ve pa na ele ka ve ho ne ka kisa ya ve pa na ve le ka ve asem la ka shalom ve asem Laka shalom, Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh shine his face upon you. Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May I look upon you and give you his shalom and give you his shalom. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in Yeshua's name I pray, amen and amen. Be blessed, and we will see you on Wednesday.